Oh. So today is our third and final in our series webinar with Buzz Wood regarding audio and video uh, technologies, apps, all types of fun things we're learning. And we're really excited to get going here today. So without further ado, Buzz Wood, you're on. Thank you, Laura. I appreciate it. Thanks to everybody for being so patient on this Friday. We will a sprint through an hour and a half of uh, fun with a big cap off you guys know what we're talking about it's winners and there's lots of them so um, that's part of the surprise there's more than three winners yep we ponied up Yay! yeah see see there is some love out there um, you want to make sure you do a mute all Laura so that because if that if that comes in then it's going to take the screen so we want to make sure that we got everybody on that okay all right, well, let's jump right into the wonderful slide deck I've created for all of you guys and um, let's get that moving. And are we looking good, Laura? Yes, Buzz, we are. Okay, is that a thumbs up, Laura? Okay, good. All right, I added a little bit something to this because I wanted to kind of tip in a little bit on not only application and troubleshooting for you guys today, but also podcasting uh, formula and, of course, the wonderful aforementioned giveaways that we're going to do. So, um, again, we're going to go quick. Um, I'm going to do, again, field notes for you guys at the end of this. Uh, and, uh, and then also you'll get the slide deck. So take notes if you want. Don't have to. Um, and questions uh, or if you kind of keep an eye on the uh, uh, chat box, uh, we'll We'll take those questions as they come and go ahead and get going. Uh, so day two review, um, you know, we kind of learned about how to put stuff together. Um, we created some general confusion, which is always good. So you know how to install your uh, camera into the rig. I did have Jerry write me and say that his was a little bit loose or wobbly. If that's the case, then um, you might want to make sure that your camera's case or the thickness of the case that you have it in uh, isn't prohibiting a good bite uh, with those red uh, silicone uh, adaptations that hold it with those V cuts. So make sure it's in there nice and tight so it doesn't flop out. Um, you know, unfortunately, if you have a, uh, a case that I think somebody had mentioned uh, that it, they had uh, credit cards or whatever in the back of it, those kinds of things are too bulky. This thing's fairly lean. So um, most phones should fit. Uh, if you have a low profile case, it'll work fine, um, that kind of thing. Um, here we go. Uh, that's what it should look like uh, once installed. You kind of get the vibe on the lavalier. Uh, you gotta use the dongle, make sure the battery is in with the right polarity, plus to plus, minus to minus. Um, it is in the off position for smartphones we've got to. Uh, that's what it should look like at the base of your phone uh, and pushed onto the uh, connector for your lavalier mic. So once we've gotten through all that, and I'm assuming that everybody has no, no real issues with those connections, right? Are we good? I think so. Okay. Um, then uh, let's talk about this video app. Uh, a lot of times people want to just use what camera app comes with your phone, but for the for most people uh, that once they get a taste of this great product called Filmic Pro, it kind of ruins them because it has so many cool features and it does so much stuff and it's great. I'm just going to give you some basics today to because this thing has got so many features in it that uh, we could be on for a lot longer. Uh, so the idea here is to kind of give you the basics and then you can use the tutorials uh, and uh, all kinds of things that I'm going to point you to in the field notes that I've already kind of noted, but I'll, I'll note again uh, so that you guys are up on it. This also, um, in this slide that you see, see where it says info in that one panel where it has the eye in that one circle in the right corner of, of this, tele, this phone, this smartphone? That info tab, if you touch it, it actually has uh, all kinds of cool on-demand 
uh, tutorials and, and PDFs and everything. So if you say, well, I wasn't around my computer, I didn't know what button did what, this thing is literally right there in the app. So it's really cool that they've designed an application that has all its supportive material within it. So when you download it, you get it, it's pretty cool. Uh, so if you never remember another thing that I say the rest of this next hour or so, um, that's where you can go and uh, get the information you need. Uh, here is a breakdown uh, of what the screen will look like when you launch Filmic Pro. And um, it's a lot of different things, but the ones I'm going to point out as we look at this um, are these uh, indicators here for exposure and focus. Um, and uh, uh, these, uh, you know, radicals is, is, it's called radicals is what they're called. Uh, there are these uh, circular and rectangular. Uh, and so they even indicate for exposure, it's the circle and for um, focus, it's the square. Now that round circle is the thing that you put your finger in and you can move it around the screen and it controls lighting and, and, fo and uh, you know, uh, aperture. So how much light comes in and comes out, gets out. So you can actually just do it on the fly. So again, if you're in a room that has, uh, you know, amberish kind of lighting, uh, fluorescent or just low lighting, you can actually uh, change the exposure uh, using just your index finger on that radical to move it around. And, and you can move it freely around the screen till you get to what you like. Once you get to what you like, you tap it and it turns red like you see in the screen. And then the focus is really important. Um, the, the rectangular or the square, um, it looks kind of rectangular to me, but it says square. Um, you can move that to the point where you want the main focus to be on your screen. And here's why it's important. Because the camera on your phone works over time to make sure that it's focusing on what it thinks you want to focus on. And in some cases, if you don't lock the focus, it'll go in and out and in and out and in and out. It's like a bad carnival ride. Um, it, it starts making you feel kind of funky because it just keeps focusing and your, your brain is trying to compensate. So the way you stop that is by getting to the point where you want to focus on, like if it's an individual or it's a, a thing, you know, like you're teaching maybe uh, in a maker space and you want to lock it, uh, make sure that you get the right focus, the that, that, uh, object that you want, and then tap it so it turns red like this. It locks the focus. So you'll lock your aperture to make sure that your lighting's right, and you'll lock the focus to make sure that the thing doesn't keep going in and out. It's pretty simple, but it, it saves a lot of people because when everyone sees this, they go, how did you do that? Because last time I recorded somebody, it kept focusing like on their tie beneath their chin instead of their you know face, and it was just like it kept going back and forth, and it can drive people kind of cuckoo. So that these things eliminate that. Um, down in the bottom right hand corner is a very uh, pronounced button, which is your record button. And then the player button that of what you just recorded is the one to the left of it. And then the settings uh, menu is that cog uh, to, you know, just to the left of the play button. And we're going to go into that cog button. I've got some uh, images that I captured on my phone that I'll show you and break down that. The rest of this stuff, uh, for analytics, manual controls, uh, you know, all this kind of stuff. Uh, the rocker, the rocker zoomer is the only other thing I'll talk about. You can slide that up and down to zoom in and out if you want to do that. Um, I generally try to not use the zoom that much unless I absolutely feel like I have to. Um, but that's how you do it. It's simply put your finger on it and you can slide it up and down to go zoom in and out. It's very, very easy. But this uh, cog setting is going to be a big deal uh, as we go through it. So let's move into that. Um, first thing is, uh, is going to be the audio control, which has the audio wave file right there. So you tap on that. And what it, oops, sorry, what it allows you to do is select the mic. And uh, so by default, it says camera microphone. Because uh, like uh, if you have an iPhone, there's three different mics. There's the bottom, front, and, and I think there's a facing microphone as well. That's the way they, the terminology goes, I think. Um, and, you, you know, and, you, and that's just the built-in one. Now, when you plug in your Movo mic, uh, it's not going to be this. It's going to be this, USB microphone. And the, how you get to that is see the arrow, the white arrow to the left? That lets you kind of scroll through the different microphones that, that are available for Filmic. Because Filmic will use whichever one you tell it to. The front-facing one that's built in, the back-facing one that's you know, there, and then the bottom one, okay? 
the one you want is none of those three. You want the one that's USB. That's because that's what's plugged into the base of your phone. And you select that. And the 48K uh, sample rate um, is, is a default sample rate, and it's fine. You don't need to worry about There's other sample rates. 44.1 is called CD quality. It's the, that white arrow will take you down to that. The only reason people move off of 48K uh, or, or kilohertz is, um, is if they uh, want to save some space and, and create lower file sizes. So, uh, and we'll talk about file sizes in, in a minute. Uh, people get a little geeky about like, I want to send this video, but it's too big and it won't fit. And there's ways to get around that. We'll talk about doing that. But for what we're talking about for shooting, high quality, crisp audio, 48 kilohertz is what you want to be at. Okay, and that's the default. So you don't have to do anything special. Next we're going to talk about is resolution. And resolution uh, is hitched to uh, to not only how much video data is coming in, um, but also uh, it's re relative to uh, where you're playing it back. So just to give you an idea, we all have been watching 720p for a better part of our lives since HD showed up. Um, H uh, 1080p, which is the next level up, has obviously for the last half a decade it's been around and then 4k as you've seen over the last couple three years has started to make its way now what people kind of do is they go well i want hd quality well you can shoot a 720p and have it look pretty clean i mean pretty pristine and if you're playing it back in a large audience uh like on a projector in a classroom 720p is completely forgivable no one would even know that it's anything different um, you, you will get a little, a touch more resolution in 1080p uh, in a classroom, but not that much that people are going to get, oh, wow, that's so much brighter or more vivid. 4K, different story. You're going to get from 720 to 4K, you're going to get a real bump in, in the saturation of color, clarity, all kinds of things. And mostly, you know, and that resolution bump is a big deal. Well, now you may say, well, I don't know anybody on this planet that's got 4K in a classroom. And you're right. There's very few people that do. However, there's so much data that's collected in 4K that when it's dumbed down to 1080 or 720, uh, it looks makes those two resolutions look even better. So a, a lot of times I'll tell people, if you have room on your phone, go ahead and shoot at 4K if you really want something blinging. But by and large, stock stuff, shoot HD 1080p, just right middle of the road. You'll be completely cool with that. Everyone will love it, but if you really want to get geeky with it, you could do 4K. But for, for you guys starting out, I wouldn't suggest 720. I would do 1080p, and we'll talk a little bit more about what other settings go with 1080p. Um, the aspect ratio of, of HD, as you guys know, so here's, here's the way it worked. Back in the day when you watched regular television, it was in what they call 4 by 3 aspect ratio, like a square, okay? And then when HD came along and it got wide, uh, it, the uh, aspect ratio was 16 along the top and nine along the side. And that's, so 16 by nine is, has been the HD aspect ratio. That's how it is. So that's why when people shoot video, they shoot in landscape, not portrait. Landscapes when you turn your phone sideways, you know, long ways, like, like we have it sitting in the, uh, your Ulanzi rig, it's, it's set for that uh, versus shooting uh, portrait. The only time people shoot in portrait is if they're going to put something on IGTV, on Instagram television, um, or other formats that like portrait instead of landscape. Um, but that's rare. So for, by and large, for what you want to do, you want to shoot in landscape, not portrait. And that is a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. And that indication is right like where I circled it on that menu. Okay? Hey, bud. Uh, we have, yeah. uh, I'm sorry, we have a question from yeah. Juan Rod Rodriguez. How do you get to the main screen? Hmm? I'm sorry? He said, uh, how do you get to the main screen? The menu nah, screen. Nah, I figured it out. Thank you. Yeah, it's the cog one. That, that little round cog is how you get to the... Yep, I got it. Thank you, Buzz. I appreciate it. Not a problem. Um, and if, if the, you're starting to kind of get lost in this, you're going to get this deck. You can review it. Um, the, the, uh, by the way, also, the videos that these guys produced are short and sweet. They're easy. Watch them over and over again. I, in fact, I was watching them for you guys and I learned something myself because this thing, this, this thing has got so many features. It's, it's, I'm telling you, pro people use this. Pro people use this app like Hollywood people use this app. 
for dailies. They call them dailies. They're shooting just dailies. Um, and, uh, and it's that good. So anyway, they're 720. And again, you can play with this. If you shoot 720 and you play it back and you go, man, that looks awful. Okay. Then bump it to 1080. If you think 720 is forgivable, you're going to save yourself a lot of storage concerns because 720 files are lighter. They're less data than seven, than 1080s or 4Ks. But again, if storage is not an issue and you're looking for top end quality, let your conscience be your guide. Here's 1080 uh, selection. And again, these white arrows that you see flanking the 1080 uh, HD 1080p indication here, the ones on the left and right, will navigate you to different uh, resolutions, okay? And again, you can play with, with that as you see fit. But for you guys, this is the setting I'm recommending. HD 1080p 16 by 9 aspect ratio is indicated up in that left little corner, okay? Here's the 4K. Uh, indication, uh, again, at, at uh, 16 by 9, large file size, premium quality. Um, here's something that you should know about. Um, not only resolution, but frame rate. Uh, video, as you might know or may not know, is just a bunch of still images all stitched together just to kind of put it in a crude example. It's, it's just a bunch of still images that are all put in into a, a complete contiguous string of sorts, okay? So um, when you talk about that, each is a frame, and every second, a number of frames play through. Um, used to be that 24 frames and 30 frames were typical. Uh, now we're up to 60 frames. In some cases, there's more, but 60 frames uh, does this for you. It captures twice the amount of data uh, from a frame rate point of view, okay? Um, and what's great about this is, have you ever seen somebody do something in slow motion and it looks muddy? The reason is, is that they're taking 30 frame material and they're, and they're slowing it down and it gets kind of muddy, it gets kind of grainy. If you shoot at 60 and you go slow-mo, it, it, it looks pristine, it looks really clean. So a lot of people will shoot 1080p 60 frames uh, just so that if, they, if you happen to slow it down because you're teaching something that you want to put into slow motion, which you can do when you edit, post-edit, you know, the video, when you take the video and put it in an editor like iMovie or, you know, uh, Adobe Premiere or whatever, um, you'll then be able to then slow it down and have it still look crispy, clean, very buttery. And, and that's, so uh, again, Shoot at 60 if you want that. If you say, Buzz, I'll never, never do slow-mo in a bucket of years. I, I just won't do it. Then you can select 30 frames uh, at 1080p, and you'll be fine. You'll be fine. Uh, on the Filmic Pro today, shooting in 4K, uh, they, only, they have a default of 30 frames is as much as it does. So I think on the iPhone, it's shooting at 4K60 on its internal app. Um, and I don't know the reason why I can't get the 60 frames at the 4K level on Filmic. Maybe there's not seeing the, the need to do that right now. But um, so it, you can't go any higher in frame rate than 30 on 4K. But you've got so much video data at 4K, it's, even if you slowed it down, it still probably looks crystal clear. Um, Buzz, quick question. Is yeah. the ratio changed automatically when we change the resolution or do we need to do it manually? Once it's set at 16 by nine, set and forget it. You're, you're good because um, you, you won't be touching that. So frame rate uh, has no, no effect on aspect ratio. And also, will the students, should they ask you questions while you're presenting or wait until the end? No, like, let's do it while it's fresh. Yeah, okay. you've got. That's it, thank you. Okay. Um, so a lot of this is like math voodoo right now. Um, so the one big takeaway from this part on, on frame rate and resolution, 1080p, just do 30 if you want, and uh, stay at 16 by 9 for the landscape view, because that's how your, your phone is going to be positioned in, in your rig, okay? And then if you want to get crazier with it, you can, you know, watch the videos and learn how to do some really exciting stuff. Everybody good on that? I'm going to, because I'm going to move to podcasting as our next deal. Okay. Oh, by the way, let me go back one, um, let me go back a couple frames. I wanted to show you this. And I meant to include this. 
do it in field notes. Um, on the on the bottom right corner where it says library player, that that the triangle that you hit to play like a play button. Um, when you get into playing back the video, it allows you to select it and say, I want you to save it to my uh, you know, my photo bin, you know, like where you keep all your photos, um, or I want it to save it to Dropbox, or I want to push it to uh, you know Google Cloud or whatever. So when you get to the player part and you hit play to see how the video is coming through, um, and just make sure that you know it's it's the shot you wanted. If you're if you're doing multiple takes, um, then you can uh, then say here's where I want to save it at, and and by clicking uh, the video, it'll pop up a number of of arrows that say I want to send it to my photo library. I want to send it to you know wherever. Okay, so um, I would tell you that to be being good stewards of how much storage you have and how much uh, information is being kept on the phone, you can get kind of crowded with a lot of shots. So if you shoot like six videos and you're only wanting one of those, so the other five need to go, I would suggest being good stewards of the, of the storage on your phone, delete the ones you don't want. Make sure they're not the ones, make sure that the ones you don't want. It will ask you repeatedly, you sure, you sure? And you're like, yes. So, you know, it gets a little annoying, but, um, the, you know, I have people sometimes tell me, hey, Buzz, I'm running out of storage or, or my memory's fading or they'll use some terminology like this. And part of the reason is, is they haven't been good stewards of, of discarding stuff because they think, well, maybe I'll keep it because you never know. Well, it, that's okay, but take and park it somewhere in the cloud. Just get, you know, put it in Google Photos. If you're an Android person, put it on iTunes Photo or, you know, wherever you want to st st save it at. Um, put it in a uh, Dropbox account, whatever you've got. So you get it off the phone because you want to give yourself plenty of leeway on the phone that you don't have storage concerns where it comes up in the middle of a recording that you're really wanting. And it goes, you only have 2% storage left. And you're like, oh my gosh, you know, this is going to go way longer than that. So again, just, you know, as good as this app can be, if we're not really watching what we're doing when we're doing playback and deletes, um, you know, or if you start recording something and you go and you flub up and you go, blah, 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 you know, you make the wrong thing. Don't even wait, make the next move a deletion of that. And that's, if you do it just in time, then you won't be regretting that you've jammed it all up with about 18 takes where you've, you know, said the word, Australia wrong or some, you know, something where you get tongue tied, you know, and it happens. So uh, just know that. Um, and again, if you start playing with this over the weekend or next week, um, you can drop me a line anytime and say, hey, what do you think? Or I might direct you to a, a, a video that tells you a little bit more about how to do it more elegantly than I could explain it. Um, but just know that, that, um, part of our use model is it helps us manage stuff. Um, so that'll get you going. You know, this, this uh, panel they have has got uh, a lot of different things. Like for instance, uh, I'll show you where I'm on this frame is this OIS is a stabilization. Um, you know, it's optical, it means optical image stabilization. And what it is, it's, it, so if you have jitter with your hand or you're on a rig or you're using your Ulanzi, uh, if this is invoked, which are those bands you see coming out, uh, it means that it's on, it, it takes the jitter out of, of your camera so that it doesn't look like you're on a bad roller coaster ride. Um, the icon next to it where it says camera with the arrows that go circular, that means that it's gonna move from the back lens to the front lens. So if you were doing a selfie as an example. Um, and there's just some other features in there that you'll get uh, more acclimated with that uh, are just fun to kind of play with. But the ones that, that uh, and by the way, uh, I think OIS is a default setting. In other words, it comes with stabilization on because most people want to use that. Um, and uh, it's just a handy thing to have. These guys have thought about everything. Oh, also to the very right uh, where you see left and right, that that's the audio uh, balancing that you'll see. Um, generally speaking, these remain about mid-level. It's it's you see low green bars right on the right. Um, that's because there there wasn't any audio at the time I captured this this screenshot. But 
uh, most of the time when you're talking like I am right now, that those levels will bounce up like toward the middle, which is about right. If you start getting up higher, it'll go, go from green to like uh, lemon yellow to orange and reddish. You don't want to be anywhere in the red because then you've overdriven the audio and it sounds horrible. So um, you'll, you'll want to watch that metering so that you're not overdriving your audio. And um, it's a really nice thing to kind of just see where you're at with it. By and large, with the microphones that you have, unless somebody's just yelling in it, you should be right in the mid-range without any problem. But there are ways to, to uh, attenuate the audio if you do get it a little too bright. And um, again, I'll refer you to the the um, to, 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 tutorials, excuse me, get it out. <laughs> tutorials to uh, find out what that's about. Hey, Buzz. Um, yeah. Susan says she has the lavalier connected and on, but she doesn't believe it's being recognized in Filmic Pro. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I um, sometimes I think that Filmic gets a little peculiar, uh, Susan. And um, and sometimes what I'll do is I'll plug and unplug it. Sometimes I'll even take the app and and shut it down and to, you know, completely swipe it off so that it's clear from the phone so that I can relaunch it. Um, I've had just a few recognition issues here and there. Um, sometimes they're very frustrating because I'm like, all right, I've plugged and unplugged this thing. And, and I don't know, sometimes the phone gets geeky. I've actually had to completely restart the phone to, uh, a couple times to get it to recognize external devices, whether that's filmic or it's just the phone being funky, I have no idea. Um, Do you but, recommend that they plug in the microphone before they start the app or after? I like it before just because it's fresh out of the gate and then all options that Filmic looks at are, are, are presented there. Um, you know, just, just know that is that, you know, I'd like to kind of do it ahead of time. That's why sometimes if it doesn't recognize it for whatever reason, maybe I plugged it in late or whatever, then um, I'll just shut the app off, like swipe it out. Like, like sometimes people like will click like a close on an app, but the app's still running in the background. Make sure you swipe it out so it's completely clear of your, you know, so it's not launched and then launch it again and see if it'll, it'll recognize it. Um, and uh, you should then begin to get, uh, using the white arrows, you should be able to get more than just the camera built in audio. If you continue to have problems with that, we can take it offline. That was Susan, we had that problem. You're muted. Susan later. Murray. Susan Murray. Okay. Yeah, Susan, if you have a problem, just hit me and I'll work with you on that one. But it's it's just, again, it's nothing that I don't think you're doing anything wrong. Um, the microphone's plugged in okay. Like you've got the dongle in and you're ready to go and it's in the off position here on your intercept. Um, it should be okay um, on that side. Uh, so if it continues to, before, before we get out of here today, let me know if you if you overcame that. I'd be interested to know. Because it, it does happen, and I wish I had a better explanation. <laughs> Just the flakiness of machines. Um, okay, I'm going to jump into podcasting if everybody's cool on the other thing. Um, and I think that podcasting, uh, as I stated here, has a, a formula and an anatomy to it. Um, I, when I first got into it, I didn't really think that it did. I just thought that, you know, and what's really funny about podcasting and video bloggers is that, you know, we all watch YouTube stuff and you see these talking heads and stuff and you think, oh, geez, I could do that there. Or you may even say, that guy's an idiot. I can talk better than that. But I'll tell you to a person, when you start doing it, it is a completely different thing. Um, you stumble on words, you forget yourself. The most easy word uh, just comes out of your mouth wrong. Um, you think you can do it unscripted and you can't, you get babbling, you get lost. I mean, it just goes on and on. And, um, sometimes when I do voiceovers, I'll do it like, I'm not joking about this 18, 25 times to the point where you just want to scream. Um, and you'll, you'll get to this. Uh, I hope it doesn't increase your drinking, but anyway, um, it might, uh, but it, it's, uh, it is a, a bit of a trick. Um, so hopefully when I go through some of the formula and anatomy and some tools and applications that I think will help you uh, if podcasting is the thing that you want to do. And I would encourage you to look into it as a communication platform uh, other than video. Um, now you might've also heard about video podcasting and all that really is, is this, is that when you shoot your podcast, you're now going to use a video camera and you can pull the audio off 
the video and send the audio out as a separate audio file. The trick to doing video podcasting, just to get it out there for you, is that you write your script a little bit differently. Because when you can do use visuals, like you would say, well, um, let me show you this microphone. Well, when they're on audio, they can't see this. So you wouldn't necessarily do those kinds of things. Or if you showed it, you would say, for those that are listening, this is a standard shotgun microphone. It has a very small footprint. This is a nine volt battery, uh, plugs in with a stand. You would describe, you'd be more of a, you'd have a more of a descriptor for this because you know that someone's just listening and not seeing. So that's the difference in creating video podcasting scripts and, and, and preparation for that. If you're doing a straight up podcast, uh, you're more in the flow of just using you know, uh, articulation to kind of tell everybody what, what's going on. Um, so here's the formula. Um, as you guys can see, the hook is kind of the attention getter. That's the thing right out of the gate. Um, and I like to use a sandwich metaphor here. Uh, the hook's kind of the one piece of bread and the contents, the peanut butter and the call to action is the other piece of bread. So when you're making this sandwich, uh, in this formula, uh, that's kind of the gig. Um, Attention getters are good uh, because they got to be crisp at the front. Like, you know, you would, because if you were doing one, you would be saying, hey, this is Buzz with the Buzz in Education. Today, we're going to talk about MacGyver. Yeah, you remember the series in the late 80s, early 90s. Uh, Richard Dean Anderson played the part. And what MacGyver did is had this superhero capability of taking just about anything and making something work from it. He created a tool out of something that you wouldn't even think. He could make a can opener, open a car, you know, all these kinds of great things. Today, we're going to talk about becoming MacGyver. Stay tuned. And then you would kind of jump in. So that's the attention getter. That's the hook. And then the content, uh, again, is the peanut butter. And, and, uh, and content's kind of an interesting thing because you, I don't know if any of you have heard this, but people go, well, content's king. And they're right, by and large. And that term's been bounced around a lot. But I think that there's two uh, cousins underneath the king or two people that play uh, in support of content being king. And that's relevance and significance. And why this is important to kids, particularly if you're teaching, is relevance is, why do I care about this? And significance is, what does it matter? Why does it matter? And in this generation of kids, they ask those two things. If, if through that lens, if, if whatever the content is, doesn't tell them Im fairly immediately, what's the relevance, you know, of this? And what is it, why is it significant? What role does it play? Uh, then people tune out, even adults do nowadays. It's like, you got to get to that, those two components. So if they're cousins to, to content, um, it's a good way to think about it. That, that, that would be the thing. Uh, call to action. Uh, you see the other term QOD, which is question of the day. At the very end, you go, so tell me what you think about what we've talked about with MacGyver. Have you ever done anything like that? And if so, share it with all of us and, and, and ask yourself, what tool did you use to solve the problem that you ended up having to remedy? And, you know, and, uh, and let us know. So that's the call to action that some people use at the end of a podcast or even at the end of a video blog. They challenge people with you know, what's the question of the day or what did you, how did you do it? Which is kind of neat. Um, one last word about podcasting. Um, I try not to do them beyond say 20, 25. I don't think I've ever done one at 30. There are people that will go for an hour. And I think I might've mentioned this in, in our previous get togethers. It's just way too long. It's just like, get to it and get it over with, you know? I mean, it's just, and, and particularly as you guys might know, is that there's a lot of white noise out there right now, which means there's a lot of people talking, a lot of people, like, remember when blogging was like, like, oh, you have a blog? Everybody like fainted. Now a blog is a dime a dozen and, and it's hard to get visibility and viewership and eyes on it because you could have the best message in the world, but it's getting lost in the sauce. That's why you want to be short and sweet because then you start building up a listenership or you'll build up, uh, you know, your classes will, will tune in because they're going to get it, get it quick, get out and that kind of thing. So hook, content, call to action. Everybody good? Uh, the anatomy is kind of goes like this. Um, I write scripts, but I write scripts almost as just a framework. I don't, I don't try to read them verbatim. Um, I did an interview with a very famous uh, uh, instructor in, in New Jersey. I don't want to name any names. She's a very brilliant person. Um, I think she's at New Jersey something or another city something or another anyway she's she's you know so i i interviewed her and we had a script that i shared the script with her and and uh 
you know, we, we, you go a little off script, but, but for the, by and large, it, it's a good framework. It's a good bones on it. And, and uh, it's, it's, it's nice to have it. In, in fact, it crystallizes a lot of what you want to say. And then if you go off script, you can kind of look at it and kind of get yourself reeled back in. If you happen to kind of go ad lib, which uh, Laura and I did quite a bit in uh, ours. Have they, I wonder if they've all heard this one that you and I did, Do you know? Um, probably cohort six and seven got information about it, but not eight. Yeah. But I can send to all for sure. If we, they go to our Facebook page, anyone that's not connected should, because we do post all of that as well as on our website. We could punish them, make them listen to it. But anyway, <laughs> it's kind of fun. So anyway, uh, on the intro, you do usually, um, uh, some music, uh, with a greeting, Thanks for joining us today. It's it's Friday, the tenth of July, uh, 2020. Right in the middle of summer. Uh, it's hot here. I'm sure it's hot where you're at. Uh, thanks for joining us. And in this episode, and then you kind of go into what the episode is about. Um, uh, I try to get away from calling them podcasts. I call them broadcasts. Uh, those kinds of things, just to kind of get off the, you know, the the buzzword of of podcasting. Pod pod pod. You know, it just gets old. Um, so, um, that's one thing you can kind of think about. Um, then the expectation, I usually like to do things in threes. Um, there's books about it. I just happen to kind of gravitate toward it. Um, you know, we're going to cover three things today in our talk. One is going to be about why does it matter and where is it used and why, sh you know, where is it typically, uh, you know, what, what does it mean to me? So you can do the three W's, where, what, and why, you know, and, uh, and, and make sure you stay on that three, three expectation thing. Because if you set that, the listener then says, oh, wow, they're going to let me know where I would ever use that stupid thing and what it means to me and why. And, and those are usually the three things that people want to know. So, uh, or you could be specific. It doesn't have to be as general as what, where, and why. It can be like, we're going to cover, you know, teaching in the classroom, uh, what remote teaching looks like, and tools that are, will help you with remote learning. You know, that way, when someone dials in, you're, you're getting the right people. And, and uh, you can actually preface that in the descriptor uh, for the podcast because people will go, ooh, I want to listen to that. So make sure you cover, again, I think if you start trying to cover 10 things, as an example, it's just too much. It's more eating than you can do at a sitting. So just make it three or thereabouts. Um, I like guests uh, on, uh, like I did with Laura. Um, I try to create no marathon situations with them. Uh, I, I bring them on. I tell them, you know, here's where they fit, um, you know, just so that uh, it's meaningful. Uh, they are subject matter experts for the most part. And um, and you acquiesce to that, even, you know, you say, oh, I know that you are a distinguished, you know, PhD, and how'd you get that? And, you know, and um, are you glad you did? Or are you glad you didn't? <laughs> you know, whatever. And uh, so you can get all that kind of stuff. And you can make it fun. You know, uh, that's the other thing is that um, I had a guy that was a, a professional speaker, a friend of mine, and he says, I always like to talk with levity, brevity, and, uh, you know, make sure I ask the question, you know, the, the questions that you need to know over and over again so that, you know, people kind of, you know, get their stuff answered. So uh, not make it too stern um, and uh, be brief and then uh, repeat the stuff that matters most. Uh, so those are all some good, good guidelines. Uh, the outro is music again, question of the day, like we talked about and invite other listeners to say, Hey, if you think this will benefit some of your fellow teachers, uh, please pass on uh, our, uh, you know, uh, address uh, at uh, the buzz and education.com and tune in again. Uh, and, you know, and that kind of thing. And then you end on a, on an invite on a positive thing after the uh, QOD. So what are the tools? Um, and uh, this gets to be a, a these four steps recording of course because you want to have a platform that you record on uh audacity is uh free uh adobe audition is not a uh, garage band if you're a mac user is free there's some other pc apps that are free out there um you know it's almost like video editing you can really get nutty with some of these tools uh, but just for the basic cut and dry of stuff where you just take out a few little things where you know it glitched or someone couldn't remember something, your guest, you know, said something that you don't, you know, maybe they cursed or something, you know, whatever, you know, and you want to take that out. 
um, th that's, those are the basics that a lot of people do. And then also, not only with your voice, but you want to add uh, maybe music to it. So you would want a multi-track recording capability that can do that, have your voice over and your music, and then be able to attenuate your music down, you know, have it come, you know, uh, up at the beginning and then come down at the end. Uh, it would go something like this. Hang on. Hey, hey, it's Buzz with the Buzz and Education here to talk today about podcasting. Everything you need to know and probably a lot you don't, uh, but stay tuned. We're going to cover three top things to do when you're podcasting that will help you reach your students and uh, bring podcasting to work for you as teachers out there in the world, in this new world. So stay tuned. And then you, you would, you know, bring, the, bring that music and do those kinds of things. Um, to, uh, you know, have an opener like that. Um, and, and you can layer those things in, in editors and bring it down, bring it up when you need to. Um, scripting. Now, I used to use just uh, like a word processor. For, I used to use pages on a Mac. You can use a word on, on, on anything and write it in big, bigger text. Like I would use maybe 18, 20 point font. So it's kind of big. And I would literally scroll with a with mouse to kind of get through it. Uh, then I found this thing called Prompt Smart because uh, I was watching these other guys do some stuff. And it's a teleprompter um, that you put on your phone or on an iPad or, or, or any kind of tablet. And I set it up on a stand and it hears your voice. So when you're speaking, it goes as fast as your voice goes. So if you, if you talk, it stays in cadence with, with how you speak. It's really cool. I mean, and so Prompt Smart is a teleprompter app that, that as you speak, it just will move. So you don't have to like do a preset timing where if you spend a little more time on ex accentuating a piece of uh, text and the thing starts moving beyond that, you're like, oh God, I gotta get going. And like you'll zoom through some stuff that you want people to really hear. So then this is just a, a thing that goes at your pace. It's really cool. I think it costs, I wanna say like, 12 bucks, 14 bucks, something like that, I think. I don't know if one of you look it up. Um, Prompt Smart. Might have been more, but, um, but what a tool. There's a couple of different ones that you can buy under the products Pro, Light, ESP, Remote, and oh, yeah. Studio Edition. Yeah, there's a whole load of them. I kind of go with the basics. Whenever you buy stuff, like, you know, like when you first get into video editing, somebody goes, well, everyone uses Adobe Premiere. Why would I want to use iMovie or some other thing? Or, you know, or I heard somebody's using Vega or Vegas uh, on, a, on a PC. Start small. And then as you work it up, if you feel like you need all the bells and whistles and stuff, then do it. Some of these are just simple. I, I mean, Prompt Smart, I didn't even read the, the, the directions on it. I just started doing it. And it just, that's the kind of stuff you want. You know, so simple as it may sound, just kind of start that way. And then, then if you feel like you need more bells and whistles, go. Um, that makes sense. They have a free seven day trial so everyone can install it and try it out. Yeah, that's cool. Um, host platforms. So like, all right, so you've recorded it, you've edited it, you script it, you got, you know, Dr. Z to come on your show, you know, uh, all those kinds of things. Now you got to have a place to park this sucker. Um, and so uh, most of the platforms that a lot of people put stuff out on are pay for and there are some that are not. And um, uh, the ones I'm listing, uh, they have actually make uh, accommodations for educators. Uh, Buzzsprout, no relation, just use my name without any permission. Um, you know, has a thing for uh, teachers now where it's free. I've noted it on some of my field notes with you guys. Um, what's cool about that is that when you park your finished product on and you upload it on Buzzsprout, you can set it up to echo out onto Apple Podcasts, onto Google Podcasts, onto Stitcher, onto uh, Pandora, uh, iHeartRadio, TuneIn, uh, Pandora. It just goes on and on. And, and you just, it just one time, just publish it there, and then they take care of the rest. So if somebody goes, well, I listen to Apple Podcasts, you go, good, I'm on there. Or somebody goes, I like Spotify, I'm on there. You know, so there's nowhere they can't find you. You know, So if kids are, like a lot of kids use uh, Spotify, um, it's a good place to park it, you know, but you can do it just in one spot, like 
Buzzsprout. Uh, Podbean, I think, is like the number one place. And uh, Libsyn is another one that's been around for a long time. Uh, but check out one. There's our, there are free ones out there. Um, music beds, like the music that you heard me just play, different uh, kinds of, they're, like if you go to Soundstripe, they actually have a trial there. Um, I've been talking to them lately because they don't really play to the uh, education community. They're more commercial. And I've been telling them, listen, there's a whole community out here that doesn't have a boatload of cash, but would like to get to some of the music. And uh, so we're having some discussions and I'll, I'll let Laura know and she'll let all of you know. Um, so it might be kind of cool. But what's neat about it is, is that you pay like 12 bucks a, a month, I do anyway, because I use a lot of it. And you can just have all this license of uh, free stuff that you know are artists from all over. In fact, the artist that I use a lot is in Toronto, Canada. And um, named Alter Ego is his name, but he, he does a lot, a lot of cool music. But anyway, um, Soundstripe, uh, you know, and just goes on and on for licensed music or royalty free. The the thing that gets geeky about it is, and um, I'm trying to think if it was Facebook, um, Facebook just pulled down a ton of posts that used uh, music from movies and from radio and and uh, stuff with, that was used without permission. And um, until you could, uh, prove that you had permission to use, um, you know, something from Top Gun or something, you know, uh, then you know, which was recorded by Kenny Loggins or something, but, you know, you, unless you have something you can say, I've got rights to that. You can't use it. You can't just use stuff like that. Now education does have a little attitude in this discussion, but by and large now, um, they're clamping down on just about everybody. So, um, there is some latitude for educators to use commercial music. Um, and you can find out more about that online, but by and large, uh, these, there's so much of this music stuff and there's some free stuff out there. So check that out. Any questions? Looks like we're good. Okay. All right. So some thoughts, uh, one of the things that, that, uh, gets everybody is, uh, is the notion of getting it perfect and nothing ever is perfect. And, uh, and so one of the statements or one of the things that are said, uh, you know, with uh, all that we do in this business is press record, just press record. I've got some people that won't move out of their house without bringing their rig with them because they want to capture video, not necessarily bad stuff, but just, you know, they're not, they, they're not out doing like, you know, man on the street stuff or newscast, or they don't want to be featured on, on CNN or, or any other station. They, they're actually thinking, oh, if I see a, a whale sighting or I saw dolphins or, or I saw, you know, just a beautiful sunset, you know, they always have their stuff with them and they're always pressing record because they want to have gobs of content that they can actually pull from. And so uh, sometimes in the preparation of all this, getting ready to do the podcast, getting ready to do the video thing, we will find ourselves stuck in this kind of funk where we're frustrated and we just don't think it's perfect enough. And I can guarantee you to a person that, that what you started a month ago is going to look like garbage compared to what you're doing today. And then what you're doing today won't look as great as another month away. So you will get better at doing this and you'll get more polished and you'll be doing it with a lot more ease. But the key thing is, is you got to press record to get, to get going in it. So um, the other thing um, I would say is that uh, in the press record area is that uh, preparation is always a big deal um, because when you don't feel like you got all your ducks in a row and you're not ready to do it, uh, you haven't written the script and you haven't, charge your batteries and done silly stuff like this. You haven't gone down the punch list of the things that we've talked about for the last couple of days. They all get in the way and, and they become, you know, annoying and they kind of take all the creative juice out of you. Like, so have you ever said, Oh, I'm going to do this today. And then the mic doesn't work or the thing doesn't work or you didn't recharge really enough or whatever. And it just takes, it's like a vampire type thing. It just sucks it out of you. And you're like, ah, nuts. and then it doesn't happen. So, uh, in order to have success in pressing record, um, as simple as that sounds, just make sure that you get in the habit of, of connecting your gear, getting it ready, making sure that you're good to go. Okay. Um, number two, don't grow up. <laughs> I know this seems like a crazy thing for a video guy to be talking about, but don't grow up is really a notion around uh, 
uh, the idea that particularly as an education, um, you know, more than even lifelong learners, I think don't grow up is really a notion around um, the best of who we are and the reason we love children so much is that we see ourselves in them. They're these creative, you know, types and they've got energy and they're, they're always inquisitive and curious and wondrous and all that. And, and the notion about don't grow up is really kind of the idea of, of trying anything uh, with a fail forward design so that you basically think about uh, how would we do this and, and MacGyvering it kind of, you know, just, you know, if particularly in these times where, where all the answers aren't real clear and everything that was a uh, habit and that we could count on is no longer maybe there. So it's, so in not growing up, you know, kids always go, well, why can't we do it this way? And you're like, uh, cause we never did it that way. And they're like, well, why didn't you, you know, and sometimes you get answered by a child and you're like, I think they got a point, you know? And, and so the don't grow up notion is, is to not rule out, uh, things that you are not unfamiliar. And as we get older, it's probably one of the biggest things we fight against is habit and, and routine. And, uh, it's, it's tough cause we, we get comfortable. Uh, so not growing up is all, all about just remaining pliable and, uh, being our best selves. The last one is a kind of a big deal for me. And it's, um, it's, a, it's around, uh, a, a, a statement that was made by a, a guy in Atlanta who was actually a pastor, but he became a public speaker, a uh, business speaker. And he had this thing called uh, a, a theme that he had called do for one. And in the whole length of it is, is do for one, that which you would do for everyone. And what's great about this, is, this thinking is that and particularly in education is that we want every kid to have everything like, you know, whether it's a camera or a pencil or whatever the heck it might be, we, the, the idea of, of having everybody have one. So it's, so there's this great equity um, is sometimes unapproachable. And sometimes the stuff that now is in is ubiquitous in a classroom is uh, found to be uh, started from very humble beginnings. Like only just a few think, you know, people got it and then it began to grow organically. And so, um, the, the, the other part of the do for one, that, that which you could do for everyone is, but don't do for no one. And the reason I share this with you is that a lot of times these types of technologies that we're learning today as a group and working with, um, they won't get adopted because everybody can't get them. And, and I get that. And there's just not money growing on trees and all those kinds of dynamics. So do for one is the notion of, of, do like you could do for everyone, but don't do for no one. And that happens a lot in education, a ton in education. And it's, it's really frustrating. Um, so that's some of my deeper thoughts. All right, now we're gonna get to the fun part, okay? Who are the winners? And it is plural uh, because what I've done is a big softy that I am. I told Mara last night, I'm going to give away some more gear because uh, the stuff that you guys wrote, and I made some notes here, uh, were wonderful uh, and really thoughtful. Uh, it spanned everything from environmental issues to SEL, social emotional learning, uh, career readiness, uh, student voices, how they can be heard. Uh, there was a conversion story from non-native to native, meaning uh, didn't really use technology, did things the old school way now having to do uh, things in the tech world. And there were, and there was a few religious ones um, and very passionate. And it was really in, in touching in, in many ways. Um, a lot of great social uh, things of helping children and helping others find careers and all that's super important stuff. Um, I, I wanted to tell you this one last thing before we get to the winners is that technology is transient. It's here today and it's literally gone tomorrow uh, or gone in a month. Uh, it's a fulcrum. It's a leverage uh, that it helps enable and empower all of us to teach and to uh, share knowledge. And, uh, and that's all it is. And uh, although it's fun and it's great, the real, the real mission here is that, is that um, the heart and soul that you guys all put into your creativity, whether it's shooting video or doing podcasts, that's the real that's the real beef. That's the real meat and potatoes. Um, these tools just help enable that. And so um, the joy I get in teaching you guys this is that it empowers you to, to have this platform, this voice, this ability to do these things. And so for uh, everything that we're learning, 
just, you know, put your heart and soul into it. People can feel it. They can see it. They can hear it. Um, and uh, again, part of the thing that, that of me giving back to you is I just wish I could do for all, but I am going to do for some, but not for nobody. <laughs> so, so here Alex, we go. I wanted to mention that I did not judge in any way. Um, I did read all of your stories and I really wish I could send all of you this equipment now, even though I sent you some, I wish there could be more, but uh, we can work towards that. But Buzz did make the decision and his decision is final. Oh, geez, no pressure. Um, hey, by the way, Laura, did we find out whether or not they, they got the TRS to TRS uh, dongle? Um, no, um, it would be good to ask today. Did you guys get that TRS to TRS wire in your boxes or no? You can kind of shake your head. It I'm was, sure. yeah, it's that one wire. Um, I've got one over there that has the two ends on it with either three stripes on one end and two stripes on the other end. <laughs> Buzz will grab one for me. I'll grab one. Hold on. Something, oops, sorry. Something like this. It, it looks, it's short like that. It's okay. a little one that has that. Yeah, it has a female connection end and then it's got the TR yeah. connection here. They did receive it, Buzz. They're all shaking their heads, yes. Yes, good, good. Um, cause thanks to Sally, cause Sally said, hey Buzz, uh, <laughs> she did it very eloquently. You know, these things you're giving away, they don't, they're all standard TRS connections. So if they're going to connect into a phone, they need to be TRRS. So uh, kudos to the call out on that. That was a good one, man. I like that. Um, here are the winners. Uh, and I picked an additional one. Uh, so Jennifer, Isaiah, and Alex, you guys won the brand new shotgun microphone set up. Um, because I just couldn't resist uh, some of the cool things that you guys wrote and uh, uh, it was really ins inspirational for me. So I um, hope you put that to good use. Um, so congratulations to them. Uh, and then uh, in a- Sorry, I've got to give a woohoo. Nice yeah, job, guys. Yeah, you. Uh, you guys, everyone wrote a lot of cool stuff. Uh, so I don't want to make it sound like uh, that the others weren't worthy, but uh, these guys just uh, for me were, it hit him, hit it hard. Uh, the winner of the pro setup is LaDonna. Um, or is it LaDana? I'm sorry. Um, you know, a, a very uh, heartfelt, uh, you know, writing and uh, it didn't fall short on me at all. I loved what you wrote and uh, you should put this to, to good use. Um, so uh, congrats there. But wait, oh yeah, there's more. There was one other standout that I just could not uh, exclude. So what I did is I dug into my personal bag of tricks and decided to give away uh, the beloved Boya that I've been using on screen. Um, so uh, how do I pronounce that first name? Help me there, Laura. Elise. Phyllis. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so you're going to get this guy. Um, it uses a nine volt battery and I'll even throw one in for you. So you got that. And then if you have the little dongle that we talked about, then you can connect it. But again, a great writing and terrific. Um, there's more, there's more. So, you know, I know we're just going to keep it going. Um, honorable mention to Jerry and Sally. And because uh, Jerry was such a good sport uh, in writing some cool stuff and Sally caught the catch on the TRS, TRRS, I, uh, I've got these two uh, flexible tripods uh, that have a detachable base to them. Uh, they're, they're, like, they're like a Joby. They can wrap around stuff. And uh, I'm going to ship uh, one of these two. To, they're, one has orange marks on it. The other one doesn't, but they're the same exact thing. Um, but uh, you guys get a nice uh, tabletop tripod for, uh, you know, soliding up your, your rig. So... And I have to tell you, everyone, I mean, your, all of your paragraphs were amazing. I was reading through them going, ah, I want to send them all something. <laughs> because there were a lot of you, too. But Buzz really did um, go well above and beyond what he should have in giving out prizes to all of you. And thank you so, so much, Buzz, for doing that. You never should have, but I appreciate it. Yeah, my pleasure. It's uh, good stuff. And uh, again, all the uh, time that you guys have spent this week has been terrific and and I appreciate you uh, sharing your time because uh, we all have lots to do and um, you know 
Anything, Laura, that strikes you that we need to cover? Um, we're kind of early in our finish, but... Uh, I'd like to, if anyone has any particular questions or any other issues that you might have to ask now and in front of everyone, because others might have the same issue. Um, everyone in the chat buzz is saying so much, you the man, there are all kinds of nice things being said. And really everyone is appreciative of the whole series and the great information that you shared with us. It's been wonderful. Um, are there any specific issues, troubleshooting that we need? Someone asked, can you tell me the name of the mic box that can be customized, the company? Which thing? I'm sorry. I guess the box that goes around. You did oh. put it in the field notes. Yeah, it's in the field notes, but just as a reminder, um, it's called on-air mic flags. Um, and uh, I think they actually, if, if you go onto their site, they, they, they say it's 75 bucks for a, a, a cube one, like the one that you saw I had on, on my. on this one, um, but they give you like a 20 off coupon, like right out of the gate. So they're not, they're like 60 something bucks by the time it's all said and done, but they're pretty quick about getting it done. It's plastic, it's got a foam insert here and uh, it fits on just about any kind of handle thing or, um, hey, by the way, I just wanted to mention for all of you that got the shotgun mics that might've wanted to do the podcasting, um, uh, is it LaDana, is that how you say her name? Yep, it's LaDana, and thank you so much. I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, I was just going to say that for those that didn't want uh, one like what LaDana got, you still can put these on a stand and use them for podcasting. Um, I've got people that even put go to Home Depot and put these. They, they take a bungee and put it on the end of a, a broom pole and put it right out of frame. So, like, it would sit just above my head, and you wouldn't see it. And they do uh, man-on-the-street recordings, and you can get, like, a really long – extension cable for this uh, that they kind of serpentine around the, the uh, handle of the broom pole. And um, so there's a lot of ways to skin the cat on, on uh, using this uh, not only in the field, but then at home, just put it on a tripod and plug it in. And, uh, you know, you can use this as well for, for podcasting. So, um, you know, that's another kind of cool way of, of doing stuff. Um, also, Buzz, I'd like to let the students know the, the, Cohort six and seven already know this, but for cohort eight, we allow students to borrow our technology from the department. And so what happens is um, if there is something that you really would love to try, you can recommend it to me and then we'll go through the purchase process. Once we do that, Julio handles your borrowing it. Once you know how to use it, make sure you can use it properly. Um, then you borrow it and can use it and try it out before you invest in something for your school or work. So some of these types of microphones we'll also have in the department. In the fall, we're not going to be on campus as often, so we'll have to coordinate really well, but still there'll be opportunities if you wanted to borrow one of the better mics that you'll be able to, one of the road, you know, the, the cordless ones and some of the other things. We also have some of the wires that you might need so if there is an issue with expense and cost, which one isn't there, um, we do have this opportunity for you guys to borrow stuff from us. And you'll just let Julio know what it is and we can coordinate dates to pick things up. The campus will be open, but it'll be limited. Well, I, um, I'd be remiss if I didn't give a gift to a very special person that kind of made all this happen. That would be Laura. Um, and this kind of benefits everybody, but um, I'm a big, user of uh, these little action cams. Um, this one is uh, made by a company called Yi Technologies. Uh, it shoots 4K and 1080p. Um, it mounts on a cold shoe adapter onto a rig, um, not unlike the uh, rig that, that you guys have received. And uh, I'm gonna donate one of these to Laura that she can uh, give to whoever wants to check it out. Um, this is great. I think, LaDana, you told me that you were shooting some uh, church events, and sometimes it's hard to kind of get everybody in frame and put a mic on this. Uh, you could, this would easily do that kind of thing. Um, but it's, uh, I've kind of concocted this uh, enclosure for it uh, with a UV filter, and uh, it's, it's kind of a nice, nice little backup rig to have. It has a, um, a micro SD chip in it. Um, 
that re it records on. And uh, again, the uh, recording's great. The thing that you guys might know about the, like these, like with Go GoPros, is the audio just stinks because the little microphone is this little dot right here and I ain't gonna capture nothing. So uh, what they provide uh, it, with it is right where I put it. I want all of Buzz's toys. Yeah, so do I. Um, <laughs> where the heck did it go? Anyway, oh, here it is. No, it's not there. Anyway, <laughs> someplace. Um, it's, oh, oh that's not it. He makes me want to go shopping. <laughs> yeah, I know. Always, every time oh. I talk to him. <laughs> so here, here's the problem is that somebody goes, well, there's no microphone jack. Where do I where do I put this? Like, if you wanted to use this and and record your voice uh, while you, you know you were shooting something, um, how would you do it? Well, this has a USB C connection right here, and there's a USB C to 3.5 millimeter, like a headphone jack, that comes with this. Uh, that I'll send to Laura so that when you guys take this and put it into a rig, and I've got the rig for you to do it with. Um, it's right here. Looks like this, and then this this guy slides right here at the top. Microphone goes right here, and then you hold these pistol grips like this, and then, you know, video it like this. So she'll have this whole rig for checkout for you guys, and then you add your microphones. There's more uh, cold shoe adapters, which we learned about. Uh, also tripod mounts. There's a quarter 20, remember quarter 20. So cold shoe adapters, quarter 20, uh, dongle for this, uh, UV filter, so you have a nice filter to keep sun rays from washing you out, and this will shoot one heck of a, of a 180 shot. You talk about super wide, this guy will do it. If this actually shoots in 4K 60 frames, like super buttery clean. I mean, like when you see this video, you're just gonna go, whoa. I mean, it's that good. And then you can push, take the chip out, put it in a reader, read it, um, and then download the video. And, uh, and it just, and it's got a decent battery life, a pretty good battery life on it. And, uh, but I've, I'm going to donate one to you all to, to use so that if you're shooting big, super wide shots and, and you want that kind of cool stuff. So action cams are getting to be pretty cool stuff. And so, um, again, there's another way to, to kind of get to it. So, Buzz, uh, thank you so much for that. Can you give the students um, the name of it and the, and the approximate cost in case they wanted to purchase their own? I know some of them are dying to go shopping. <laughs> well, I'll tell you the best deal going. Okay. So Yi Technology makes this one. Okay. It's YI technology and it's a pretty cool one but here's the better deal get ready to write this down go and go find it right now the guys at GoPro have taken their hero 8 which is their brand new jack cool camera okay I mean really cool the bet one of the best iterations of GoPro they've ever made this thing was I think originally went out to market around two three forty nine they've dropped it to two forty nine 249 bucks and it comes with like all the bells and whistles and stuff and um, and it even has the ability to use it as a streaming camera. So the camera I'm on right here that I'm looking at you at, you can even, you can take a GoPro and put it up on a tripod, okay? And stream uh, like 180 shots, like super wide shots, okay? So the GoPro Hero 8 is 249 almost everywhere right now. Beg, borrow, steal, whatever. You will not regret this. This is a cool, cool, cool camera. You've got one, right, Laura? Yeah, see it right there. That's the, that's the money. So the Yee camera that I'm giving y'all to borrow from Laura is cool. That thing is the new hot jack. I mean, that thing's got it. It's, it's just, just got it. It's good. So go borrow that. And Laura, this rig I'm giving you, she, uh, they call it the Go Rig. So it's kind of made for GoPro. They could still uh, mount the GoPro in this uh, if they bought a GoPro. And these plastic ones with the handles, it looks like you're driving a sports car. Um, these things are only like 39 bucks. Can they use the rig, the Fousey rig that we sent them? You could. Uh, you know, the center part is for a, for a, a phone right. like this. Right. Okay. But you could mount, let me get the camera again. You could mount this up here at the top and have the best of both worlds. I mean, you don't have to use this other, other rig. Um, but, but, you know, you can do that. Um, but, it, just as long as it's stabilized. And then you've got other cold shoe adapters for microphones and stuff like that. But again, the Achilles heel of this thing is it doesn't record audio that great, but now we're gonna solve that with the uh, little dongle that's gonna come with this sucker. And then you're off and running. So put a shotgun mic with this guy, lights out. It's, it's really cool. And then with this, um, 
you don't mind me showing you with this with this type of rig uh there's a thing called pan and scan and you you know it because you watch tv is like when somebody pans along like that usually they use a, an image a rig stabilization thing like it, there's a number of them out there steady cam is what it's called and they're super expensive but if you put your elbows into your ribs or into your gut and you just hold this and kind of move like this people will go oh my god did you did you buy like a stabilizer or like a steady cam no it's just the way it's just that you have such a solid grip with this or if you use the little uh pixie tripod that we i showed you the manfrotto and you screw and you hold it at the base and, and pan like this you'll get the same kind of feel and with that camera with a, a gopro or even this uh you know yi technology camera you'll get this really again just buttery smooth kind of pan it just looks so cool and people are like going dang you're really getting it going and you're like yeah, i know it's pretty cool so anyway um you know, we have a couple of questions yeah um on the lavalier mic we received does the red and green light stay on or is it supposed to fade out oh on the on the ones that they're gonna receive you mean that they already have now oh on the on the movo mm -hmm. um well, you know, it's weird, unless I'm not seeing it. I don't have um, lights on mine. Does, so, does, does, does somebody, if yours is square, maybe it's got lights, is it? Christina is, has yeah. the square one she can show you. Yeah, yeah, so there's the, if I put it to the top, it's green, and then it fades out, but then if I go down to the bottom, it's red. But I did connect it, and I bought the Filmic Pro. Yeah, cool. Well, I, I will tell you in anything, in just general terms, red means it's it's either di the battery's dying or it's off, and green means that it's on. Um, I have one that has a like yours, Christina. That's got an intercept like, and it, it always has a light on. It lets me know, oh man, I better shut this thing off because I'm burning the battery up. This one had the round one. For those of you that received the Movo with the round tube-like intercept, uh, it doesn't. I, I don't see any lights on it at all. So maybe that's just me. The square one is Christina. Is yours cube-like? Yeah. Okay. So maybe that one has it. It's just a visual reminder that it's either on or off. Yeah, I bought the Filmic Pro and I plugged it in and it was, re it, I could see the, the audio thing going up and down so I knew it was working. Okay. Thank you. Gary, is that, you got the same? Yeah. Okay, oh yeah, I see it. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Another question is um, how the mic fits into the iPhone, which adapter do they need to purchase? I know you went over this, but if you could just show again, yeah. the lightning adapter. Um, the lightning adapter is good for shotgun or any other mic that receives a 3.5 millimeter or quarter inch is another term for this jack. Um, and this is TRRS. Okay. So much to uh, Susan's, uh, or I'm sorry, Sally's point, you, you have to plug in a TRRS to TRS connection to get the uh, shotgun mic or an external mic that's using a standard audio jack. Cause some of these pro mics like this don't, don't come with a TRRS connection native. It just comes with a standard, you know, audio jack type of thing. And so you, you got to be mindful to have one of these little adapters to put in the dongle to get that. But, but the gateway to any phone is, are these dongles. Um, here's a USB C one for Android. Here's the lightning one. Without these, you can't put an external mic uh, in them unless you have an old phone that you can just plug in the regular, 3.5 millimeter headphone jack like this guy. Okay. So she was asking about the lavalier mic that they received. The lavalier mic. The iPhone. Yeah, the lavalier mic definitely takes a dongle. If you don't have one of these, you need to request one from Lord. Tell her what phone you've got if you did not get one. Mm -hmm. So it's either Android or Lightning for Apple. Okay. Um, another question: Does the lavalier mic slide into our rig? They're having trouble attaching it. Yeah, I noticed with mine. For those that have the barrel connection, and you won't see it discreetly on the thing, but they used a, a screw that sticks up right in the bend of this. And so to get past that screw where this thing can really slide on to the rig is a little bit tricky where you got to really pull this metal clip up to get past that screw head. Otherwise, it kind of sits loosely and it falls off and you're like, well, that didn't sit very well. So for it to really kind of sit like the way I had it the other day, See if I can get it to do it again. Yeah, there. I pushed it on really hard just to get past that screw head. So I've got it like right, right hanging upside down like, like that. And, uh, but that's just some place to park it because when this goes on somebody's 
body, um, usually this clips on their waistband or, or some part of their body and then the, the microphone with the windsock comes up through their shirt and up to their collar. So this won't sit on your, on your phone, your rig too much. But, but if, you're, if you're narrating while you're filming, and you want to have this booming thing, you may decide you don't want to wear it, then you can just clip it onto your rig and just, you know, have it facing you while you're recording and just talk like that. Okay. Um, the other question, those that are talking about the light say that the light does go out and there's a question, does it still work if the light is out on that square microphone? Um, everyone else is saying they had the same issue. It does go off the light. It does not stay on. Yeah, I don't, usually most manufacturers, when the light goes on, it stays on. So everyone that sees it go off, think, uh-oh, did it, did it peter out? Now, batteries that come with these devices, sometimes they're not the best batteries in the world. Um, so it could be one of two things. Either the light is made to go off after it initially comes on, uh, or um the battery itself is is not that good, and you might need to go get a, you know, a better battery. You know, we're getting feedback that it works with the light out. Okay, okay, and that can be the case uh, a lot of times. Always have bat battery backups just in case. You know, that kind of thing. Um, what was the other thing I was going to mention about that? Yeah, it escapes me. Okay, um, I don't see any other questions. Does anyone have any other questions before we lose Buzz? I'm never too far away. <laughs> kind of but, far down there. <laughs> <laughs> just a little bit. But, um, you know, again, I, I couldn't encourage you guys more to, to just begin to get out there and start doing some stuff um, and then become famous. And then don't forget us little people. You know, that, that would be good. Yeah, they um, will need to record video for their classes. I know in the fall, one of my projects, they have to record video. So, um, and I'm sure many of the other faculty also have them create video stories and such podcasts. I know Dr. Schamberg, who is here today, um, does a lot with podcasts. So um, we're very, very thankful for your giving us all of this information, showing us the equipment, being so kind and patient with all of us. and. Um, and particularly your generosity, which is overwhelming to me. But okay. I thank you so, so much for everything. You're getting really great accolades in the chat, so I hope we can, uh, you'll get to read those. That's, that's good. I uh, would tell you that um, that uh, sometimes the, the use of video uh, gets by us, and we always, I, I mean, I'm sure you've been at family events going, did anyone shoot any video on that? And they're like, no, you know, um, in classrooms, uh, it's so important, like particularly with Maker, you know, everybody's doing, you know, build to learn models these days. And, and a lot of times you'll see kids build stuff and you'll see the outcome of it and you'll go, well, what happened? And, and the teacher who was kind of coaching them will go, well, they failed like 18 times before they got to this. And you're like, where's that? Because that's the real thing. You want to show that journey. So, so storytelling whether it's done through podcasting or video is, is a big deal. And to miss any of that is, is kind of the, I think the part that you, you don't want to let it get by you because then if you go, well, where's the video on, on that? It, it also, it just puts more meat on the bones of, of what the outcome was and what the final thing was. So just keep that in mind that, that um, have your, have your stuff ready to go because those moments get by us and then we're like, Oh man, wish I did that happens to everybody, but you know, it's worth it. Well, have a great weekend, everybody. It is nearly happy hour. We're a little bit early on the finish, but I've enjoyed uh, getting to e-meet you. And uh, again, if you have any questions, feel free to uh, uh, get a hold of me. And uh, uh, Laura knows how to reach me. And then, uh, you know, if you uh, are stumbling and you're going, oh, and you need some mojo, call me. I'll help you out. Excellent. Thank you so much, Buzz. We greatly appreciate it. We'll be watching for your podcast, The Buzz on Education. Yep. Got some new stuff coming. So looking forward to it. All right, guys. Thanks, everybody. Have a great weekend, and I'll see everybody early Monday morning, 8 30. She's brutal. <laughs> Bye. Bye, y'all. Have a good weekend. Bye. Stay, Bye, stay everybody. well. Thank you. Stay well. Bye.